15 Things You Didn't Know About Prince Harry and Meghan's Royal Exit Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Hello Aluxers and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be exploring the bigger picture surrounding one of the biggest recent news stories. Surely you couldn't have missed the news that Britain's Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, have decided to retire as senior members of the royal family in order to become financially independent, and that doing this has caused quite a fuss. Perhaps you're wondering what their reasons are, what the future holds for them, or why this is such a big deal. Well, Aluxers, you can count on us to have you covered. So let's dive in and look at these 15 topical facts about Harry and Meghan. Number 1. Meghan isn't a typical member of the royal family Until fairly recently, it was rare for a member of the royal family to marry a commoner, which means people who weren't born with an aristocratic title like lady or duchess. Although times have changed, Meghan is only the second American and first person of mixed race to marry into the British royal family. The last time an American married a member of the British royal family in 1936, it ended poorly, with the king at the time abdicating or resigning his duties, something that a lot of Brits don't forget that easily. And the fact Meghan was divorced also raised some eyebrows in the British monarchy, which is still pretty old-fashioned. So while a lot of the public in the UK were more than happy for Meghan to join ranks, some more conservative parts of British society didn't welcome her with such open arms. Number 2. Being a senior royal is a full-time job They say you can't choose your family, and this is true of royalty too. Harry and Meghan will still be members of the royal family. They're stepping down as senior members of the royal family. But what exactly does that mean? The term senior member covers adult members of the family and their spouses who are closest to the queen. They're expected to share the queen's duties, including appearances at official events, and in return, they get financial support from the crown. But other responsibilities come with it too. They can't express political opinions, and they can't make money independently from what they receive from the crown. With Harry and Meghan giving up their official duties, they'll be able to pursue their own paths in business. Number 3. Harry is sixth in line to the throne And this won't be changed by Harry retiring from royal duties. The order of who gets to be king or queen next, or the line of succession as it's officially known, is determined by laws that go back to the end of the 17th century. On the queen's death, the first in line is Harry's father, Prince Charles. Second is Harry's elder brother, Prince William. The third, fourth, and fifth spots are taken by William's three children. The first six in line to the throne need to ask the queen's permission to get married, which Harry did back in 2017 when he got engaged to Meghan. And at the moment, Harry and Meghan's son, Archie, is seventh in line to the throne, the first child of mixed race to ever be on the list. However, they'll still keep their titles, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, or the Sussexes for short. Number 4. Harry has sometimes been seen as the wild child of the royal family When Harry announced he was giving up royal duties, he raised a few eyebrows, and it wasn't the first time Harry's done this. In 2005, photos of him emerged at a fancy dress party wearing a Nazi uniform, definitely not the most tasteful choice. And in 2012, pictures surfaced of Harry partying in Las Vegas, in which he was naked and playing strip poker, generally seen as not quite appropriate behavior of a royal. In Harry's case, it looks like the saying should be, what happens in Vegas stays on the internet to haunt you for years to come. And there's also a rumor that's followed Harry around, but in this case, one he's definitely not responsible for. The one that casts doubt on who his real father is, and if he really is descended from royalty. But more on that later. Number 5. Harry's Charity Work Whatever trouble Harry got into in the past, you have to admit he's more than made up for it by his passionate work for a wide range of charities. These include the Invictus Games, a sports event in which veterans with disabilities compete, which was founded by Harry, and his work raising awareness around the issue of mental health, which has seen him team up with Lady Gaga and Ed Sheeran. 
This is something that's especially close to Harry's heart, as he says he's suffered from mental health problems himself, which he attributes to losing his mother, Princess Diana, in a car crash when he was just 12 years old. Number 6. Meghan was known for her acting, blogging, and charity work before she met Harry. Before becoming a member of the British royal family, Meghan was already a familiar face thanks to her acting career, especially in her role as Rachel in Suits. But she was also known for her work with humanitarian causes, promoting women's rights worldwide, and she was a successful lifestyle blogger, running the website The Tig, which was named after her favorite wine, Tiganello, and made her around $70,000 a year. The Teague was deactivated as soon as she got engaged to Harry, because as we know, senior royals aren't allowed to make money independently or endorse brands. Number 7. Both of them have spoken out about how the press has made their lives difficult. In 2019, the couple opened up about the pressures of being royals. Meghan stated that constant media coverage took its toll on her, especially when she was expecting her baby, Archie. With Harry, the problems go all the way back to his mother, Princess Diana, who was killed in a car crash in Paris in 1997 while being pursued by paparazzi. Harry has openly stated that constantly being surrounded by tabloid reporters brings back memories of his mother's death. Number 8. Harry served in the British Army between 2005 and 2015. Harry served in the military, reaching the rank of captain and doing two tours in Afghanistan, in ground forces and flying Apache helicopters. Early in his career as a soldier, there was a heated debate about whether he should serve on the front line. Harry himself was keen to do this, but a lot of people objected, as he's seen by the enemy as a valuable target. His tour to Iraq was cancelled against his wishes, but he was deployed to Afghanistan twice. Number 9. Harry isn't the only royal to step down in the last year. It's fair to say it's been a testing few months for the British royal family. Harry and Meghan's announcement came a few weeks after news that Harry's uncle, Prince Andrew, had stepped back from royal duties as a result of his involvement with disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein and allegations that a 17-year-old girl had been forced to have sex with him. Whatever eyebrows may have been raised by Harry and Meghan stepping down, it's fair to say that anything they've done isn't nearly in the same ballpark as the claims that Andrew is facing. Number 10. They have a combined fortune between 30 and 40 million dollars. Usually when people say they want to become financially independent, they don't have multi-million dollar fortunes, but in the case of Harry and Meghan, they do. About 5 million of this is Meghan's thanks to her half a million dollar a year salary from Suits and from her blog. The rest comes from Prince Harry, who inherited over 20 million dollars from his mother, Princess Diana. As senior royals, they also received something called the Sovereign Grant from the Crown, which they'll no longer be entitled to after stepping down, as well as an allowance from Prince Charles. However, whether or not they'll still receive this isn't known. Number 11. They could be set to make even more money than they did before. Harry and Meghan may be giving up the money they receive officially, but once they're allowed to make money independently again, this could add up to a whole lot more. Harry could join the world's top public speakers who could earn six-figure sums from single appearances. The Sussexes have also trademarked a range of clothing, calendars, and souvenirs, which indicates they could be about to start selling their own merchandise. And there are unconfirmed rumors that Meghan has signed a voiceover deal with Disney, putting her acting skills to use once again. And with her higher profile now, she'll be able to command much higher fees. Number 12. Harry and Meghan are both media savvy. It's clear that Meghan has proven her internet skills with her blog, The Teak, and although the royal family might not be that well known of posting videos that go viral, Harry seems to be the exception. Videos that earned him a lot of fans include the one in 2016 where he responded to a challenge from President Obama to promote the Invictus Games, and in 2019, a video with Ed Sheeran to promote awareness around mental health and redheads. Both of these showcased his sense of humor and natural charisma, which we could be seeing more of once he's no longer an official senior royal. Number 13. There's a lot of speculation that Harry isn't really Charles's son. 
Of all the gossip surrounding Prince Harry, one that just won't go away is a theory that he really isn't a blood member of the royal family, and that his biological father isn't Prince Charles, but a man named James Hewitt. The evidence looks convincing at first. Hewitt was Princess Diana's horse riding instructor, and the resemblance, starting with the red hair, does raise some questions. But the timeline of the events shows that Princess Diana couldn't have met Hewitt until 1986, two years after Harry was born. And although Harry might not look that much like Charles, just take a look at Charles' father, Prince Philip, when he was Harry's age. Number 14. The Sussexes are likely to move to Canada. Harry, Meghan, and Archie have recently been spending a lot of time in Canada and have stated they want to split their time between the UK and North America, and so far Canada looks like the most likely place for them to call home. But why Canada? Neither of them are Canadian, but they both have connections. Meghan lived in Canada while working on Suits, which was filmed in Toronto, and while the couple were dating, they spent a lot of time in Canada. Besides this, Canada doesn't have the same kind of intrusive press the USA is known for. The response in Canada has mostly been positive, with coffee chain Tim Hortons even offering them free coffee for life if they move. Not that they're likely to need it with their fortune. Number 15. The Obamas Could Become Mentors to the Sussexes If you want a dazzling career after leaving public office, there's nobody better than the Obamas to look to for advice. With speaking tours, the success of Michelle Obama's autobiography, and deals with Netflix, they've really been doing well since Barack left the presidency. And it's been reported that the Obamas have already been advising the Sussexes on their life outside of the royal family. This makes sense as they've been close friends for years, and both couples combine their star status with a passion for social causes. Well, Aluxers, that's a wrap for today, but before you go, we're curious. Which do you think Harry and Meghan should focus more on? Charitable foundations, lifestyle brands, or should they combine them both? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, here's that bonus you're waiting for. They say that every girl dreams of marrying a prince, but in the case of these two, it was the other way around, because it turns out that Harry had a crush on Meghan long before their first meeting on a blind date organized by a friend. Harry was a huge fan of the show Suits, and had even told his friend that Meghan's character Rachel was his ideal woman. Meghan, on the other hand, said she wasn't aware of who Harry was. As she explains it, being American, she really didn't know all that much about the royal family. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.